To be noble or not to be noble? That is the question as we look at the new Necron Command Protocol rules and it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so continuing on with my series of videos on learning the new Necron Codex and today it's time to look at the new Necron Command Protocol rules. This should be interesting. Right, Command Protocols. The Necron version of Space Marine Doctrines which we know are very good. Abilities that affect the whole army each turn they get a special rule. However, with the Necron command protocols, it's slightly different because we've got a lot of hoops to jump through to get our abilities to work. Admittedly, we do have two command protocols to choose from each turn, and with certain dynasties, we have the abilities to use both of those command protocols each turn. However, as I said, we've got a lot of hoops to jump through before we can use our abilities, so let's talk about those first. So first of all to use the command protocols all units have to be from the same dynasty that does exclude Catan shards and dynastic agents. So a mixed dynasty will turn off the command protocols you won't be able to use them. Now I actually think this is quite a good idea because well I'm a bit of a fan of single faction dynasties. I just think it's more thematic. But of course if you want to try and get the most out Stupid phone, why is it not on silent? But if you do want to use mixed dynasties to get the most out of the special rules, of course you don't get command protocols. Now the good news is if you're taking the silent king from the Zerican dynasty, well at least he is a dynastic agent, so you can take him with a different dynasty, still get command protocol. Now on top of having the same dynasty, you also have to have a noble character heading up the army. Someone like Imitek the Stormlord, or an Overlord, or what I think will be the standout units for this job, and that's the Command Barge. You're going to see me using the Command Barge in my list. It's survivable, it's got good range, and it's a noble character. So as long as you're a single dynasty with the exception of Catan Shards and the Dynastic Agents then you can unlock the command protocols. I'm going to talk more about what those protocols are later in the video. But basically you choose the order of your protocols before the game. However, to use those protocols we've got a lot more things that we have to do. First of all, to activate the command protocols each battle round, well, you have to have a noble character alive on the table when it happens. It doesn't have to be your warlord, so if you had two noble characters, it could just be one of those. However, if you are only taking one character with the noble keyword, and let's say the rest of the characters are cryptex and they don't have it, well, that character, the noble character, has to be alive to activate the command protocols. And then there's one more restriction, one more hoop to go through. The units with command protocols have to be within six inches of a character, excluding the Catan shards, to activate, to be able to use the protocol ability. You are joking. Oh my god, it's an industrial tree cutter. Can you believe it? Oh well, the show must go on, as they say. Right, okay, so we've got all of these restrictions for being able to use these protocols. So, assuming we've managed to do all of these restrictions, what are the protocols? Are they actually going to be worth using? Can have a look. Too stupid tree cutting. Okay, so the first protocol is Protocol of the Eternal Guardian. 
This is favoured by the Nihilic, the Nihilic dynasty, where they can use both protocol options. So the first option is, if you don't move, advance or fall back, you count as being in light cover. So basically you get a cover save in the open. Now the second option effectively allows you to be in defensible terrain when you're assaulted. Now the protocols come into play at the beginning of each battle round and whoever's going first in their command phase that's when they're activated. So if you're not going first and you have an alpha strike happening well this could be very useful to choose Directive 1 to be in cover. Now of course if you're in the Nihilic Dynasty to have both of these activated for first turn assaults and first turn shooting it's very useful. So if I was playing the Nihilic Dynasty I think I would use this command protocol first. However it could be quite useful for any army that feels threatened about an alpha strike. Now the second protocol is Sudden Storm, which is the Nephric based one. They can use both of these protocols. So effectively you get a choice of an extra one inch movement and then also to be able to raise the banner or perform an action and still do your normal abilities like shooting. Both of these abilities are actually pretty good. That's one inch extra movement, which you can couple with Relentless March to get an early start in the game with your movement. And then you've got the ability to actually perform an action whilst shooting. So again, another good first turn ability. Still useful in other turns, but I think, again, potentially first turn is where this one would lie best. Especially if you're not using the Custom Dynasty to give you that well, amazing six inch movement at the beginning of the game. What an ability that is. Now next up is the Protocol of the Vengeful Stars and this is the Mephrit biased one and it's for shooting this one. So basically a wound roll of a six is an extra minus one AP. That's one choice. The second choice is if you're shooting at half range then you ignore cover. Both of these are pretty decent and of course in the Mephrit's Dynasty you can use both of them at the same time which is pretty good. Now you do want to be using this one pretty early on in the game to make sure you take full advantage of as many guns as you can and of course to make sure that your noble character is still on the table so you can actually use these protocols. I'm liking this one and what's quite notable here is these protocols are quite different and most of them seem to be better off at the beginning of the game. However, is that always the case? Let's read on. Okay, so next up is the Protocol of the Hungry Void and this is the close combat orientated one. Of course, the Novok based one. They can use both of these protocols. Now, the first one, the first option is a minus one AP on a roll of a six to wound in close combat. And the second option is plus one to strength in the first round of close combat. So both here are pretty decent, especially if you're planning a first turn, a charge, or you've got an assault based army. Now, potentially this one you could hold off to later in the game. Maybe you've got some flayed ones coming in from reserve. You could maybe hold this back till turn two or three. So not necessarily a protocol you would use at the beginning of the game, but a very useful one for close combat. Okay, so next, the Protocol of the Undying Legions. This is the Serikan ability where they can use both of these abilities. And the first one is an extra wound back when you use Living Metal or when you're using RP and you've got an RP roll to make, you can re-roll one of the fouled RP rolls. So both of the abilities are about survival. It's quite interesting, the abilities. You've got survival, you've got close combat, you've got shooting, you've got movement abilities. So there's quite a nice mixture there. And again, this one, the Undying Legions, is probably a good one to have for first turn. Now, of course, if you are going first, you're not going to be using the Living Metal ability, so you're going to choose the RP-based one. However, if your opponent's going first, you have the option for both, because both, of course, will be usable. Okay, so next up is the Protocol of the Conquering Tyrant, and this is the Saltec-based one. So the first option is to give you an extra three inches 
on your buffs basically, your aura abilities and those extra uh, buffing abilities. And then you've got a second uh, option which is to fall back and shoot, although that's at minus one on ballistic skill. Both of these though very good and of course the Sotek being able to use both of them at the same time. Personally I think holding this one back for a couple of turns before you use it is going to be pretty useful. Either wait until your opponent assaults maybe on turn two or three from deep strikes. Obviously if their army is a first turn assault army then maybe you should be using it at the beginning of the game but I think holding it back could be quite useful. Also, as you move your units on turn two or three, then that extra three inches on the aura abilities could be very useful indeed. So some very usable abilities there. I think the standout one is the Hungry Void, plus one to strength in close combat. That's a pretty powerful ability. However, how are we going to make these abilities work? God, for God's sake. Ah. Alright, they seem to be... Oh, I think they might be moving away. Get rid of these few branches and hopefully they'll be off. Okay, so how do we make the most use of these command protocols? Because, well, it seems to be a bit of a challenge in actually getting them to work. The Zerican dynasty have access to mess with the command protocols slightly, like their warlord trait. However, there's nothing in the book which allows us to mess with the order of these traits, especially after we've selected them at the beginning of the game. Once you select them, you're stuck with them. So picking the right command protocols for the right turn, and then picking the correct protocol out of the two is going to be key. That's where we need to build our skills. Yes, they've stopped. Right, now of course, when we're list building, if we're going to build around these protocols, it's going to change how we build our list because not only are we going to make sure that we've got at least one noble character on the table, we're going to have to have a splattering of other characters now potentially the Hexmark Destroyer could come in handy here, being a character and in the Elite's slot, potentially. Don't diss me too much, we all know how bad the Hexmark Destroyer is for shooting, but maybe can offer some other things. And of course we've got other things that can affect the protocols, things like the Convergence of Dominion, spreading those around, giving us the extra bonuses. So we have to make sure that our list is capable of taking advantage of the protocols if you want to go in that direction. Obviously if you're taking Scorpec Lords and Cryptics or other characters that don't have the Noble ability, well then you're just going to miss out on the protocols altogether. Of course it's quite handy we can take the extra Cryptex without actually using up a HQ slot, but of course it's all about points investment. How many points do you invest in spreading those characters out? And how much are you going to actually benefit from the command protocols? Now the way I see it, we've got three options here. The first option is to plan around command protocols as much as possible. Build your list around them to take full advantage of as many protocols as we can. Mm. Option two is to build your list normally if you happen to have a noble character in your army, well then of course look at how you can take advantage of some of those protocols but not necessarily building your list around them. And of course option three is to ignore the command protocols totally. Obviously that only really accounts if you're not using any noble characters. So that would be the three options that I think we need to look at when we're building a list. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments box below. And if you want to see some more Necron Tactic videos about the new Necron Codex 9th edition, then here is a playlist just for you. Beam me up.